across the fence, garlic scapes, fennel bulbs, and lots and lots of peas. We're in the field and in the kitchen with a few ideas to make the most of what's growing in the garden right now. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Judy Simpson. Midsummer means our gardens are beginning to bring in a bounty of fruits and vegetables. The trick is knowing what to use now and what to preserve for later. To begin, we're going to head out into the garden where University of Vermont Extension's Leonard Perry and garden writer Kathy LaLiberté are harvesting, planning, and planting. Kathy LaLiberté. Now, Kathy, this garden looks even more beautiful every time I come. It's just <laughs> no weeds. It's just so much going on here. And right in front of us, it looks like we've just got a bumper crop of peas. Yeah, this is, I have to say, this is a lot of peas. Um, this is the first year I've grown bush peas, which are, they don't look, they guess they look, they look kind like of, kind of tall for hedge bush. peas, I know. So they do have a little bit of a trellis. Usually I grow the tall ones, which in the storms we've been even, having, even, they just have gotten knocked hmm. over. So I decided I'd give these a try. And this is sugar sprint. Um, they're edible pod peas, and um, there's a lot of them. <laughs> so tell me about picking these. Now I looked through and found a couple of nice big fat ones, but it looks like a lot of these are just coming along. And how, how do you tell when to well, pick? Well, the thing with sugar snap peas is um, let the pods fill out. They're a lot more flavorful. You get more pea, um, and so the ones that are kind of like you had there, they're kind of nice um, and fat. Sli yeah. yeah. The f wait till they fill out, and you can actually start to see the peas inside. Um, you want to pick them before they get dull on the outside because then it gets starchy flavored. But um, even if you pick them a little bit young, they're still great. Great. So uh, moving up here, you have something under the white cloth. What's yeah. the surprise there? <laughs> well, um, that surprise is hopefully going to be cucumbers when I take the cover off. Uh, if the cucumber beetles haven't eaten it all. Um, I've had real cucumber beetle problems. I know a lot of people do. I know. I cover mine uh, early on in squash and so forth yep. for the vine borer. Yep. I think, again, that covering with this uh, fleece-type material is one of the best ways, especially early in the season, to yeah. keep the pests off. But you got to remember, things that flower, Need pollination, right. and so you want to get it off so they can get pollinated, or you won't get yeah. fruit. Yeah, and you also need to put still rotate your crops because you don't want to put them where you had cucumbers before, because a lot of times the the bug is in the soil even before you put the plant in there, and then you cover it in, and then so just move it to you different just can't spot. see what they're doing, especially yeah. if you're replanting, right? That's and right. That's so right. So uh, about the succession, which I know you do now. Up here is the uh, fennel, which just looks gorgeous. Yeah, Look that bulbs. fennel is really huge. I've got a second crop down here um, where they're a little bit nicer. Those are, I'm gonna use those for roasting because um, they're big and a little bit mm -hmm. tougher. These are still small enough that they're really good, just raw, sliced into salads. Um, so I have some more started in the nursery bed um, that I have over there under shade netting um, where I have uh, more fennel, I have more lettuce. This lettuce you can see is pretty much gone by. It's been hot the last week or two and it really went quickly. So I have some new starts under the, the shade netting. and So I'll you'll just keep some coming right yeah. through the season that way. Right, and so when I pull these guys out, I won't put lettuce there again, but I'll probably put it over there where I had some uh, some broccoli that didn't make it. <laughs> again, the same index probably, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, tell us about the cilantro there. That looks beautiful. Well, a lot of people have trouble with cilantro, um, just figuring out uh, when it's ready and how it goes, it bolts really pretty quickly, especially. Oh, meaning it sends up the flower stalk. Yep, so it sends up a big tall flower stalk. And so the way I try to deal with it is um, cut it when you're going to use it. Don't just take stems, just use scissors, cut it right at the ground, um, get a big fistful and then uh, it will regenerate at least once or twice. And But I do have another crop of that coming too. So unlike parsley, which you plant once in the spring and you can keep cutting it, cilantro you usually need another crop or two. Um, to keep it going into the fall. I know lettuce will bolt too if yep. with the hot weather and a lot of times. And it just gets and milky and kind of bitter. So, so some things like what, cilantro, lettuce, and some spinach, probably spinach um, are ones that you want to have another that's crop right. maybe. Yep. A little nursery area, even little packs, a cell pack, flat, something to yeah. you know, have some coming along. And transplant, wait for those rainy days, the cool rainy days, that's when you want to transplant, not on a hot sunny day because it won't work. And then finally the uh, peppers over there I want to mention, uh, when do you pick those? Those look ready. Yeah, <laughs> well you can pick, that's a funny thing, you can pick peppers pretty much any time. Um, as the longer you leave them on there, They'll start to turn red. That's when I like them. So I tend to leave them on there. You, you said you like yeah, green. Yeah, well, we green tend lessons. to get anxious and impatient, <laughs> and we want to have some peppers. Yeah. So we pick them. They're fine, yeah. you know. But again, we realize later if we left them, they yeah, come around. Yeah, but there's plenty of peppers, and you can pick them when you want them. Well, one, one of my favorites is garlic. Before we go, I want to take a look at your garlic. Yeah, let me show you the garlic. 
most people know the garlic bulbs and you know you buy in the store, but this is how it really starts. Yeah, these are um, this is the garlic about to go to flower. This is called a garlic scape, and uh, as it matures, this will straighten out like this, and you'll see the typical uh, globe flower up here. But you don't really want to let them do that. Um, although they look so cool like this. They really are attractive. <laughs> I know. Um, but you, if you snap these off, they come right off, and that is called a garlic scape. And you can use these, um, you can grill them, you can chop them up and use them in a salad. Uh, you can also make pesto out of them. Great, so a lot of use is just for the scapes. Yep. And you do want to take those off, attractive as they are, because we found, we grow a lot of garlic, that if you leave them on, the plant's putting all its energy into making mm. that flower, and you want it to put its energy into the bulb, because that's what actually, in a short time, when the leaves start dying back, um, that's when you harvest those bulbs, garlic bulbs. So um, so you want the energy to go back into those, so you get as big ones as possible. And then, the thing I like, too, about garlic, in addition to it's you plant it in the fall, which a lot of people don't realize, um, and then you can just forget about it, and it's really pretty carefree, I find. Oh, very. And then you harvest it in the uh, midsummer, like I say, in about uh, a couple, three weeks, and long about toward the end of July, and then you put something else in, and we've got these small peppers we put in. We've started the different types, so we get a second crop, so that's our succession. Yeah. We do that. I usually put in uh, fall lettuce and spinach and kale and stuff like that, which I actually have started in the nursery bed. Well, great. Well, one of the things to watch for is um, saw these little uh, chew marks here. There's a new pest. I hate to mention <laughs> yes. this. It's always something. I thought it was but it's fine until leak you moth. came. It was yes. just um, a few years ago found actually in the U.S. The first place was over in Plattsburgh, New York. Ah. And it's a moth that lays eggs and the larvae uh, will actually, you open it up and you can look for them. I didn't see any luckily in here but you see this kind of uh, chew marks on here and the foliage starts to go down. Unfortunately, they like all alliums, things related to leeks like the onions and garlic. Mm. So we had ours covered this year. I had a friend that didn't have his covered nearby. He lost all his garlic. So hopefully you don't get this, but watch for it. Wow. And if you do, there are some organic sprays you okay, can use. Okay, I'll be calling you up. So let's go to the studio now and see what we can do with all this produce. What an abundance of vegetables. I want to welcome Leonard and Kathy to the studio. Welcome back to Across the Fence. Now, Kathy, show us what we can do with the garlic scapes. Well, um, as I said, there's a bunch of different things you can do with them. Um, I, last night, I, I sauteed them in a, in a wok with broccoli. They were really, really good. But you can also puree them just like you do with pe regular pesto and make a pesto out of them, freeze that, mm -hmm. and then you can use it all winter long. Wonderful. Now, Leonard, you also have um, a recipe for using pesto. Well, yeah, Kathy, um, actually in a minute I'll show making the pesto, but uh, we, my wife makes the pesto too, and we actually make a soup. It's very simple. I'll have a recipe at the end for that. Um, but it's basically a vegetable broth you start with, and about five cups of that. These can all vary depending on your taste and what you like. Um, then once that comes to boil, you add a package of tortellini. We like the tricolor, but you can use any kind. Three minutes for that. And then you put in some uh, peas, um, like we saw and that Kathy grew and provided. Um, but, you know, just a nice um, handful or two of those, again, to taste. And then for three minutes, and then at the end, you put in about a, uh, about a third to half a cup of pesto mm -hmm. and turn the heat off. Your soup's ready. Wow, that's it's fantastic. very simple. We love it all winter long. We nice. Think. Now, Kathy, I think you're going to show us how to make some, some pesto? Yeah, I don't have a food processor here, which is one thing that you do need. Um, I suppose in Italy, they probably do it all by hand with a knife, but <laughs> not me. Um, so what goes into the pesto is um, just basil. Take it off the stems. You just want the leaves. Um, shred some um, Parmesan cheese. My recipe also uses a little bit of Romano, so shred that up um, and put the, first of all, put this in the food processor, puree it with some garlic, and um, add the pine nuts, and get that all mixed up, and then you can put in um, a squirt of lemon, a little bit of butter, which is a little different than mm -hmm. most recipes, and some garlic, I mean some um, olive oil. Puree it till it's nice and, and um, smooth, and then you can freeze it in um, Ziploc bags, or some people do it in ice cube trays. Uh, I did it in this, so great. Yeah, you're set to go. All right, now let's talk about peas because you brought a lot of them. Yeah, I brought some <laughs> of them. <laughs> um, 
So these peas are the sugar snap peas, and one of the things I did with them this year, you can blanch them, of course, and freeze them that way. They're, if you leave them around the house, they're gone. This will be gone in the day. You just can't help. It's like potato chips. Um, but I did make some pickled peas um, here, and I put in um, a garlic scape and some red pepper and tarragon and um, vinegar. And this is not processed. It just has a regular lid on it because I wanted the peas to stay nice and crisp. Mm -hmm. So these will be stored in the fridge. They can't be, go on a shelf because right. they're not um, sealed. But um, we'll see. These are I've made them once before. They were really great. Well, I can smell them. They smell really good. <laughs> All right, now Leonard, do you have a, a hot pea pickles that you make? Uh, well, I'll do one similar to that. And actually, uh, when I made it, I got a little carried away. A, little, a few <laughs> hot pepper flakes went too far, so uh, they were really <laughs> spicy. So if you like something hot, you know, use that. Put some hot pepper flakes in to taste and uh, let it sit for a while. You'll you really have some good good pea pickles. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't want to pickle them, can you just freeze them? Uh, your peas? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. Uh, one of the things you want to do um, with a lot of vegetables, and peas is a good example, but peppers is probably the only one you don't want to blanch. Now, blanching, what that does um, is kill the enzymes. The ba there's bacteria and enzymes. The cold, when you freeze them, takes care of the bacteria, but the enzymes you have to actually heat and kill. So what you want to do is put them in uh, boiling water. It varies usually about two to three minutes for vegetables, but with uh, peas, uh, they're thinner, so you know 90 seconds is all you need to do. So what you do want to do is uh, rinse them, trim them if needed, and then you put them actually um, into boiling water. What I like to use is this mesh bag. Actually, I get that at a home brew shop. You can find them online. Mm -hmm. They use them for grains and home brewing, but it works excellent for blanching vegetables. So it's just a mesh bag. You put your uh, peas or whatever in here, and then just put it into boiling water. Suspend it there. I use a clothespin on the side for about 90 seconds, again, mm -hmm. for the peas. Take them out, put it right in cold water, because you want to you know, stop that uh, cooking action. Um, and then you can, um, we'll show you later how to kind Kind of dry them, but um, you don't want to put them right in the freezing um, bags or containers uh, because they'll all stick together as a clump. So you want to kind of, I'll show you with the berries how to do that. Very good. Now, Kathy, we're talking about cilantro in your in your garden. Tell us a little bit about how you can store cilantro. Yeah, I didn't bring cilantro today because, as you saw, I was sort of going by. But it's the same thing as you do with parsley, and you want to just chop this up again. You can do it by hand, mm -hmm. or you can do it in the food processor and put it in a Ziploc bag and just freeze it just like this. Nothing else. Terrific. Let's talk about fennel too, because some of the bulbs are kind of big. And this was a little fennel that mm -hmm. I showed, um, and this is really great, just sliced in a salad and. So you want to cut off I'm these. Just move this over yep. a little bit. Cut off these big edges here, and then just start slicing. You can cut off the bottom, and then slice as thinly as you can. I'm not so good at slicing thinly, but you want to slice it really thin like that, and mm -hmm. then just put this in a salad. Really, really good. Mmm, delicious. All right. Well, um, we've talked about vegetables, and I know you want to talk about fruit. Right, uh, berries are just great. Of course, uh, strawberries, um, usually in June, but you can get some ever-bearing ones later. Of course, July is the time for blueberries and raspberries. Um, what you want to do with these is actually um, uh, wash them. Some of the experts say don't wash the blueberries. We do. They come out fine. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your choice on that. Um, strawberries, you have a choice. You can actually, once you uh, rinse them and cut them up and take the holes off, you can actually dust them with sugar. A lot of people like to do that or, or non some sort of sweetener. But as I mentioned about freezing, before freezing, if you then, um, they're rinsed, they're wet, you put them right into bags in the freezer or container, they'll stick together in a clump. Right. And you'll have one big cube. So what we like to do is just use like cookie sheets, you line it with parchment or wax paper, and then as I've done with these raspberries, you spread them out here. After they dry. In. Yeah, after, uh, and then um, they can dry, they'll be separate, so when they come out, they're individual. Then you just put them in the bag and freeze them then. So, and use a freezer bag, especially for freezing, because mm -hmm. regular um, plastic bags won't um, will, you know, let moisture through. So you want to get a freezer bag or freezer container. Um, enjoy them then all fall and winter. That's wonderful. And so now, obviously, if people have any questions, there's they can find information on how to do this? Right. I've got on my website some articles about vegetables and fruits and actually how to uh, go about this and some of the details about the uh, blanching process and how, you know, the times for the different vegetables and, and the freezing of the fruits and so forth. But again, very simple to do. And uh, I like freezing because it, it's just really fairly foolproof and I like simplicity, you know. And it's, <laughs> and it's worth, to me, having a little extra space in the chest freezer. 
freezer you can just uh, just eat out of all winter. Right, and if you don't want to go to the work of, of canning things. Exactly. Or I, making I know jams. a lot of people like to do that, but um, this is just a nice alternative. Mm -hmm. And a great way to extend the season. It really is, yeah. And now's the time to get this stuff. P pretty good year for fruits and vegetables? Um, it seems like it, yeah, so far. We'll see. You know, hopefully it, it keeps going. Yeah, but it's been great. I know I had a great time picking all, you know, all these raspberries. <laughs> Can't wait to get out You've been busy. and get more blueberries. This is about the last from last year, and they're well, still great. Well, I want to thank you both for joining us today. That's our program. I'm Judy Simpson. We'll see you again next time on Across the Fence.